Hi and welcome to a new tutorial. In this one we're going to be going through the best developer tools for specifically Django developers. You don't need anything to follow along, so let's get started. So we're going to try and keep this list of developer tools to not the rather obvious ones. So that being said, we're not going to be including Git. So just plain old Git, whether you're using GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket. This is the first tool that you will probably need to learn in order to become a programmer of any sort. And we're just assuming that you understand that already. If you don't, now you know it. This is where you should start. It's an awesome tool for version control and you're going to need it and use it pretty much every day of your life if you are becoming a programmer. So that's Git, the first one. And with that out of the way, we can now look at some of the other ones. And I'm going to start off with the editor, which is VS Code. So you can just go to code.visualstudio.com and this is a free editor you can download. It's probably the best free editor in my opinion. You've got four main features that it talks about here. So IntelliSense, so whether that's for Python or for any other kind of language, there's syntax highlighting and a whole bunch of other features for code completion in the editor and the Python support specifically is very good. So you can't go wrong with choosing VS Code for Python developing, for Django developing, it's pretty much the same. You can define a settings file which has the path to your virtual environment and a whole bunch of other editor specific settings that can allow you to build your Django projects quite easily and I do enjoy it myself. Then you've got debugging and you've got built in version control with Git which is probably one of the best features. And then the extensions which is via a marketplace that you can go and build your own extension, publish it there and then you can install these extensions into the editor and use them for different purposes such as syntax highlighting or databases or icons, themes, a whole range of different things. So you can't go wrong with this. There's a huge community backed behind it and I definitely suggest it. The next one we're going to look at is called ngrock. So you can just go to ngrock.com and basically what it does is it creates a public URL for developing on your local host. So what that means is that your local host will be mapped to an HTTPS URL that you can then use for testing. And one example of where you would use this is for, let's say, testing Stripe payments. If you want to test a Stripe webhook, you, the webhook has to be sent to a secure URL. They won't allow you to add just an HTTP URL. And so that makes it difficult to then test if you're on localhost because you're only on HTTP. So what you do is you set up ngrock, you map your local host to one of ngrock's URLs that it configures for you, and then you can specify that as a webhook, and that would ultimately still be mapped to your local host, so you can test it as if it was actually on your local host. And it's a really powerful tool, and that's just one example of how you could use it. So all you need to do is just come to download, and you can just click to download it, and then follow these very simple short steps, just these four steps, and you have it up and running for specifically Django. When you've got your local host running on port 8000, what you'll do is you'll execute ngrock HTTP and then port 8000. So that'll then map your local host to ngrock. So I definitely suggest this. It's very helpful if you need to be on an HTTPS URL. So that's ngrock. The next one we're going to look at is Postman. And this is quite a popular one. So Postman is used basically for building APIs. It's a desktop application you can download for free. So you can just click to download the app and then when you have it installed, you can then just run Postman. And this is then what it looks like. You have these tabs that you can specify a URL in. You can put all your parameters, authorization and all of the information about a request. And you can work with testing it over here specifying the different methods. So it's very convenient if you don't want to go and build an entire front end to go and test your API. This is the tool that you would want to use. And you can actually get code snippets that represent the request that you've set up. 
So in this case, this is for Node and you can come and select the language that you want. And then it gives you some code that represents the request that you've been working with, which is pretty cool. So I definitely recommend Postman because when you're building an API, you will need to test all the different methods and doing that via some UI is useful, but this provides another perspective of how you can test it, which is really awesome. Then the next one is called Kite. So you just go to kite.com and basically it explains Kite here. It says it's a plugin for your IDE that uses machine learning to give you useful code completions for Python. 100% free. You've got it for Atom, PyCharm, Sublime, VS Code and Vim, which is really cool. So all you need to do is just click download now and that'll download it. And you can actually use the link in the description to take you there. So once you have it downloading, then you just follow the installation steps and then you'll have this desktop app that you can open up. So I'll open mine up now that we can see it. And so this is what it looks like. Now I have a VS Code project open here, so I'm just gonna drag this over and show you what I mean. So once you've installed Kite, all you need to do then is just install the extension. So you're gonna search here for Kite and it's this one here, Python Coding Assistant. You're just going to want to install that. And once you have that installed, then you'll see at the bottom here, it has Kite. And that's how you'll know that you'll be using Kite for your code completion. So what I can do is I can hover over anything. So if I hover over render, then you see I have this docs option. If I click that, you'll see that I get here views.render and I get a little bit of information about how people use it. So they pass in a request, a template name, some context, and it gives me a description of what render actually is. And so like this, I can then actually work with the docs right next to me. And as I go along, get code completion and documentation. So for example, let's say, I'll just come down to the bottom and let's say, here I'll just say return. And there you can see some of the options that are provided to me by Kite. So I'm getting all of the function options. I'm getting all of the class options. And in my experience, it's actually a lot better than VS Code. As one example, if you go into the admin and let's say we try to register some app, there you can see the documentation has just been updated to admin. And you'll see all of the options we have here to import from admin. And most of this you won't actually get if you're using default code completion. All you're going to get are the common ones like model admin, tabular inline. But as soon as you want to, for example, let's say register something, your normal code completion just can't compete. You don't get any of these options. And that's quite nice, especially if you're learning Django or a beginner in Django. It's very nice to see all of the available options and Kite can really help you learn a lot better with the combination of the docs and with the code completion here in the editor. So definitely do give this a try. Again, the link's in the description if you wanna go straight there. And then the last one we're going to take a look at is PG Admin, and that's basically Postgres Admin. Now, in order to make full use of that, you're going to need to install Postgres. And here you can see I have Postgres already installed and it's the little elephant icon and I can go and open Postgres. And then you'll see I have all of my databases installed on my machine so I can manage them. I can stop those servers. I can start them up again. And PG admin is basically a nice way of connecting to these databases and then working with them. So if we just go and search for PG admin, then here you can download it. So you can download it for whichever operating system you're working with. And then once you have that, you'll be able to open it up. And basically what this does is it creates a nice UI for you. So it's then hosted on your local host and then you can basically interact with it all within the browser. So you're going to need to set up a password, which is basically to log in. And once you log in, then you'll be able to add servers and servers are basically these Postgres servers here, and then connect to them and manage the data within here. And not only are the servers local, you can actually connect any remote server. All you need is just the 
host of that server and then you can connect to it. So if you have a digital ocean database you've created, then you can just open up the permissions of that database to allow your local machine to connect to it and then grab all of the environment variables, go through the process of creating a server. All you do is just go right click, create server, give it a name, and then your connection is going to require the host, which is going to be the actual host of the database. You'll fill in the rest of these details, the port, the username to connect to the password. Once you hit save, you'll have that database available and you can see all of the tables, columns. You can perform different SQL queries and work with it very nicely all within over here. And this is quite nice. And even though Django configures your database for you, Sometimes you're going to need to take a look at it if you're playing with your migrations or you just want to see the actual database itself, then this is one way to do it. And so that's all we wanted to cover in this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you thought. And otherwise, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.